Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias, St. Eochon Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Tuesday, March 7th, 2023, and here are the readings for today. A reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 4, verses 8 through 15. Cain said to Abel his brother, Let us go out to the field. And when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground, and now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you till the ground, it shall no longer yield to you its strength. You shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me this day away from the ground, and from thy face I shall be hidden, and I shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will slay me. Then the Lord said to him, Not so. If anyone slays Cain, vengeance shall be taken upon him sevenfold. And the Lord put a mark on Cain, lest any who came upon him should kill him. A reading from the book of Proverbs, chapter 5, verses 1 through 15. My son, be attentive to my wisdom. Incline your ear to my understanding, that you may keep discretion, and your lips may guard knowledge. For the lips of a loose woman drip honey, and her speech is smoother than oil. But in the end she is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death, her steps follow the path to Sheol. She does not take heed to the path of life, her ways wander, and she does not know it. And now, O sons, listen to me, and do not depart from the words of my mouth. Keep your way far from her, and do not go near the door of her house, lest you give your honor to others, and your years to the merciless, lest strangers take their fill of your strength, and your labors go to the house of an alien. And at the end of your life you groan, when your flesh and body are consumed, and you say, How I hated discipline, and my heart despised reproof. I did not listen to the voice of my teachers, or incline my ear to my instructors. I was at the point of utter ruin in the assembled congregation. Drink water from your own cistern, flowing water from your own well. A reading from the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 5 verses 7 through 16. Thus says the Lord, For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah are his pleasant planting. And he looked for justice, but behold bloodshed, for righteousness, but behold a cry. Woe to those who join house to house, who add field to field until there is no more room, and you are made to dwell alone in the midst of the land. The Lord of hosts has sworn in my hearing, Surely many houses shall be desolate, large and beautiful houses, without inhabitant. For ten acres of vineyard shall yield but one bath, and a homer of seed shall yield but one ephah. Woe to those who rise early in the morning, that they may run after strong drink, who tarry late into the evening till wine inflames them. They have lyre and harp, timbre and flute, and wine at their feasts, but they do not regard the deeds of the Lord or see the work of his hands. Therefore my people go into exile for want of knowledge. Their honored men are dying of hunger, and their multitude is parched with thirst. Therefore Sheol has enlarged its appetite and opened its mouth beyond measure. And the nobility of Jerusalem and her multitude go down, her throng, and he who exalts in her. Man is bowed down, and men are brought low, and the eyes of the haughty are humbled. But the Lord of hosts is exalted in justice, and the Holy God shows himself holy in righteousness. So I realize it's a little bit premature in talking about the resurrection of our Lord. But since today's reading in Genesis talks about the death of Abel, I thought it would be appropriate to take a look at this icon. This is the icon of Christ's journey into Hades, where he loosed the bonds of death and he made Satan a captive. That's Satan in chains right underneath the brass doors. Adam and Eve being pulled from their graves. But if you look to Jesus' right, 
right about here, this is Abel, the first person to know death. And so in our Lord's resurrection, not only does he resurrect Adam and Eve, but he also resurrects their son, who spent the longest amount of time in the realm of the dead. In this icon, we also see John the Baptist pointing to Jesus and a couple of kings, maybe David and Solomon. On the other side, a couple of prophets, maybe Isaiah or Jeremiah. And in all of this, we see all of the um, combination of elation, but also of tremendous sorrow because of all the time that they've had to spend in that dark domain, basically because of their transgressions. So the transgressions of Adam and Eve. So when you look at this icon, maybe you can have an appreciation, a newfound appreciation of the depth of the suffering that went into those people during their time in Hades, but also the fact that there is our beloved Abel ready and willing to be brought into life everlasting through Christ's great mercy. So we can use this icon as one of the things that will help to inspire us through the rest of Lent to keep our focus steadfastly on the resurrection of our Lord that we may be ready to receive him after we complete the course of the fast. And may God bless and keep you and those that you love today and always. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, amen. I hope you have a great day. God willing, we'll see you tomorrow. If you found this video to be helpful, please do like it in YouTube and feel free to subscribe to this channel. You can add a comment below if you have any questions or things you'd like to say. And please feel free to share this with your friends. Again, have a great day. Thank you very much.